You can turn in your Bible to Proverbs chapter 13, verse 7. I want to talk to you today about the benefits of making yourself poor. It's going to be an interesting study. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 7. There is that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. There is that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. Um, that's what you would call a, a life verse. Something that you need to really consider. Um, there's different ways that you can go through this life. One way is to create artificial wealth through debt. Through perpetual debt. And uh, that's what the vast majority of people do. Be it in America or Australia or Germany or the UK or wherever you're at. Canada. Wherever. Uh, there's a lot of people who have created the illusion of wealth through their debt. Oh, look at my big house. Look at my big car. Look at my this. Look at my that. Um, how much do you owe on it? I remember seeing this little junky Volkswagen Rabbit many, many years ago. It was all dented up and spray painted different colors. And the guy had a license, or he had a bumper sticker said, at least mine's paid for. <laughs> what was he doing? Made himself poor, yet he had great riches. There was no uh, monthly car payment coming in, you see. Hmm. And um, I'll just tell you right now, the Lord has led us, my wife and I and my son, into that very life. The life, we don't have a Volkswagen Rabbit. <laughs> just had to put that in there. Um, but, you know, the, light, the Lord has led us into a, a homesteading, off-grid type of a, a life. Um, Debt-free living. And um, you say it sounds uh, pretty difficult. Uh, well, there's, there's hard aspects to it. I'm not going to lie to you and say it's all just, you know, fun times and whatever else. There's, there's hardships. There's times that you have to put up with things. But it's better than being in debt. It's better than having an artificial system out there, some big mortgage that I can barely pay and I you know, lay awake at night when I can't make my payments and whatever else, like a lot of people are doing. And uh, this is going to be a rebuke, okay? Because I've seen, uh, there's a lot of lost people that get this stuff figured out. A lot of lost people that make themselves poor so that they can be rich. A lot of lost people in the tiny house movement. A lot of lost people in the homesteading movement. A lot of lost people that are staying away from debt, and yet I see Christians, professing Christians, um, and they're just drowning in debt. And why wouldn't they? They go to a building that's mortgaged. Oh, we got to pay off this church. Uh, you know, we got to do these fundraisers and spaghetti suppers and benefits, uh, bake sales and whatever else. And they got to pump 10% out of all the members of the congregation. Debt. And they're not going to say a word of what I'm going to be teaching you in this study. Because the pastor doesn't want to uh, end the illusion. Because he's got a mortgaged house and a mortgage, or a, well, not mortgage, but a, a car loan and everything else too. I remember uh, going to church buildings over the years and I'd have pastors that would say, they get under conviction when they see my old junky truck and they'd say, well, you know, I've thought about putting bumper stickers on my vehicle like that, but they're so hard to get off. And then when you want to try to sell the vehicle, then it, it just doesn't look good and think, kind of weird. I have never owned a new car or a new truck. Never. And I never will. Why? Because I want to make myself poor so that I can have great riches. Um, there's a lot in the Bible that you would take heed, uh, or that you would do well to take heed to. Say it that way. I'll give you another verse. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 7. Proverbs that you should live by. The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. Hmm. You know that when you borrow money, you become a servant? Oh, this is my home where I live. Uh, no, it's not. That's the bank's home. They are the lender. You are the borrower. Mortgage means death pledge. Do you know that? Yeah. Uh, that's kind of a problem if you're a Christian. You're making a death pledge? Buying something that you can't afford? Why? Because you don't, you don't want to wait for it. <laughs> Again, well, well I, know, I know other people that you're going to compare yourself to the lost world. 
Why is it that all of a sudden Christians no longer can live the kind of a life that where they have, they're living by faith and they're saying, hey, God will provide? Why is it that uh, all of a sudden Christians have to live just like the lost world? Oh, we're going to need a nice house with three bedrooms and two bathrooms and all this other stuff. Really? Really? You need to have that? Some big house that you can barely afford the mortgage and you can barely afford the heat and the electricity and everything else? You got to have that, do you? Why? You're going to be a borrower and you're going to be a servant to the lender. Hmm. You know, maybe it's time Christians start to wake up a little bit and start to say, you know what? Maybe we ought to try to get out of debt. Maybe we shouldn't be living a lifestyle that we can't afford. Just a suggestion. Or you can be a slave. It's really up to you. Let's look at another verse. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 4. The sun is shifting here and I'm going to get blasted with sunlight here, but that's okay. Proverbs chapter 11. I'm going to tell you right now, give you a little prophecy. Financially difficult times are coming. And I mean another Great Depression. I don't mean, a, oh, a little bit of recession, a little bump in the economy. I heard somebody uh, say recently that uh, some EU leader or something like this called it a, uh, what was it, a uh, economic stutter or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, no, it's called the financial system is collapsing. And if you're not ready for it, uh, you're going to go down with the ship. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 4. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. Uh, your riches that you can have, that you can store up and whatever else, they're not going to profit you in the day of God's wrath. And I see all these guys, you know, I'm a Christian and stuff, and now we, boy, we need to, you know, prepare for hard times and whatever else, but, you know, God bless America, and I think God's going to use this to bring back America. You're nuts. You're nuts. This nation has turned its back on God. It kicked prayer out of the schools. It kicked the Bible out of the schools. It says that's a hate crime to speak against sodomy. They're sodomite marriage. They're aborting millions and millions of babies. But God's okay with this nation. You're insane. Well, brother, I believe in stocking up gold and silver, and I believe that we should have precious metals and things to stock up for the day of, of when things fall apart. We're going to get more into this as we continue. Um, uh, that's a problem. If you don't have righteousness, if you don't have, if you don't have righteousness, uh, I'm trying to get away from the sun, but it keeps nailing me here. If you don't have God's righteousness, you're going to be in trouble in the future. Give you another verse, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 28. He that trusteth in his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. You know what happens when you make yourself poor and you go into the homesteading lifestyle? You come out and you look and you say, you know what? Um, that organic heirloom food or whatever else that's so expensive in the store, I don't need to worry about it. Why? I can pick it out here. There's other areas out here in nature and things like that, parks that you can go to and whatever else, state parks and wilderness areas and things. You can catch fish for food. You can hunt game for food. You can forage for wild edibles of all different types, things to heal you, things that you can eat, wild berries, wild apples. There's everywhere up here in northern Maine, there's wild apples everywhere, and you just see them falling all over the road and just getting run over by people's cars. Free food. And people drive right past the free food, go to the grocery store, and pay with a credit card food that's not even good for them. Genetically modified food. It's insanity. People in America are insane. I would say that the number one sign of this nation is going to fall and it's not going to come back, people have lost their ability to survive. Survival instincts are gone. Absolutely gone. You have people that walk around and it gets cold outside and they got short sleeve shirt and, and shorts on. And you see, they're cold. Well, stupid, put, have some sense and put some clothes on. Get a coat, put it on. You know, oh, it's okay, I'm just going to run from my heated vehicle into the heated store and then I can run back again. And what if your vehicle breaks down? Well, then I'll call somebody on my cell phone. All these little technology things that they're tied to, and that's their safety. They don't have enough sense to, to put on a winter coat. And you're coming out here and try to find food out here? Are you kidding me? <laughs> they can't even think about doing that. 
and coming out to a place like this and homesteading and saying, you know what, I'm going to actually build a place. I'm going to study what it means to, to build off grid or, or to build a tiny house or whatever else. Power goes down and people just, oh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Well, move off grid. You'd be surprised how little electricity you need. Live in something very small. Make yourself poor so that you can be rich. You understand? Well, brother, I'm, I'm not really worried about an economic collapse because I, I got quite a few ounces of gold, you know. And I've been stacking up my silver bars, boy. Ten ounce silver bars, I got stacks of them. I'm going to be profiting, you know, when things go down. Really? Let me show you a verse of scripture for you. James chapter 5. All you gold and silver people out there. Gold and silver is fine, but uh, if that's what you're putting your, all your trust in and your faith in, I've got a little shock for you. The Bible's got your number. The Bible's got everybody's number. James chapter 5, verses 1 through 3. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rest of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped together, or ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. You say, wait a second. Then the Bible, the Bible doesn't isn't very smart. Or, you know, the Lord is not very smart because He wrote this thing of your your gold and silver is going to be rusted. Oh, uh, it's not talking about actual physical rust. No more than the way you have somebody and they say. Boy, I was, I was out there, tried to run this course or whatever else. Man, I, I was just out of shape. I really am rusty. It's an expression. Okay, obviously gold and silver does not rust in the sense of steel or iron. All right, uh, that's not what it's saying. It's saying there are people that are heaping together gold and silver for the last days, and it's going to be useless. All right, I did a study many, many years ago about gold and silver and banking and everything else. What is biblical money and, and all that? And I've been wanting to redo it, but there's just not enough time to really do a good in-depth study on it. But I need to say this because I see this thing. When I check out economy types of people, be it Gerald Salente or, or Greg Hunter puts out some good stuff. He interviews some good people and Catherine Austin Fitz, she has some good stuff to say. I, I watch a lot of these people, Peter Schiff, all these different people, and they're all gold and silver, gold and silver, gold and silver. You know, you're just going to be able to get gold and silver and you can just go on out and you can buy what you need to buy and all this other stuff. Um, actually, if you do the research in it, uh, gold has been confiscated three times in American history. The War of 1812, the Civil War, and the Great Depression. Confiscated. It's not a safe haven. Okay? Um, and here's another point that I need to bring up. Anybody that knows anything about precious metals will tell you, anybody that has even the basic smallest amount of knowledge, they will tell you that the market has been manip manipulated for years. Okay? Um, gold and silver is worth a whole lot more than what it's being sold for right now. And all these people saying, I think gold's going to go up to $3,000 an ounce, maybe $10,000 an ounce, maybe, maybe $50,000, you know, You'll see all these videos out there, financial experts saying gold's going to skyrocket any day now. Any day now, gold's going to skyrocket. They've been manipulating the market for years and years and years, but someday it's going to just stop, and you're going to get all this money and all this wealth and everything? Uh, no, that's actually going to collapse. Uh, gold and silver is not going to be worth anything in the future. Number one. It can be confiscated. It has three times in the past when people had a lot more moral character and were a lot stronger and would have fought it. And yet it was confiscated three different times. Two times in the 19th century, once in the early 20th century. They can confiscate it. Number two, they can make it illegal to buy and sell. You take in your 20 ounces of one ounce gold coins and you say, oh, I'm going to be safe. I'm going to be able to buy my food. Hey, Mr. Coin Collector, here's 20 ounce, 21 ounce gold coins. And he says, uh, sorry, uh, here's the sign. I'm not allowed to buy or sell it anymore. It's illegal. So they could never do that. Check into the thing of Norfed coins. N-O-R-F-E-D. Bernard von Nothaus. 
he mended up these little gold coins, or it's gold and silver actually, uh, you know, fine silver and whatever else. And he went to prison because he was saying it's, you know, trying to bring down the Federal Reserve through printing up, you know, alternative currencies and all this other stuff. Federal Reserve is a private bank and they don't like other private people in competition with them. Go figure. But they put the guy in prison and they made his coins illegal. And now if you have a Norfed coin, you can't buy it, you can't sell it. You're stuck with it. And you mean to tell me they couldn't do that with other gold and silver? Gold maple leaves or gold whatever? Of course they could. Of course they can. They can make it illegal to buy and sell. Certainly. They can confiscate it. They can make it illegal to buy or sell. And uh, again, the thing of market manipulation, I just need to say this. Right now, as I'm speaking, for the last week or two, or however many weeks now, they've been doing quantitative easing. The banks are failing. People are falling apart. They're losing money. And what do they do? Let's print more money into the economy. Disaster every time it has happened in history. Look at Zimbabwe. Look at the Weimar Republic in Germany. Every single time they print more currency, it destroys the economy. Destruction is coming. And if you're putting your faith in gold and silver or in your riches in the bank, you're going to fall and you're going to fall hard. You say, what's the solution? Well, you need to get saved first and foremost. You need to have the righteousness of Jesus Christ first and foremost. Not get your spiritual house in order. No, you need to get saved, dirty sinner. You need to come to Jesus Christ broken. Get on your face on the ground and say, God, save me, a sinner. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. None of this. Get your spiritual house in order. Get, you know, get things right, you know, whatever. And you can just kind of pretend that you believe in Jesus and you just kind of continue like the world. Uh-uh, no. You better run to God and say, God, save me. Please, God, have mercy on me. Step number one. Number two, you say, well, I've already done that, Brian. I'm already a Bible-believing Christian, okay? Make yourself poor. Start getting rid of debt as quickly as you can. Don't go out and say, well, you know, there's some signs that the economy might be getting worse. Might be getting worse. But, uh, boy, I sure do like that new 2020 uh, Ford truck. They cost $60,000 or some insane inflated price. I sure, I'm sure thinking about getting a bigger house. You're insane. You're crazy. You say, well, well I actually have the money I can pay for it in cash. Um, how's that going to help you in the future? Even if you could pay for some big house, some big mansion, some big truck or whatever else, how's that going to help you? Downsize. Bring it down. Okay? Look into the tiny house movement. There's so many videos out there on YouTube. Let them challenge you. Look at your life and say, do I really need all this stuff? Why am I coveting? I mean, think about it. Is it coveting to say I want to get a smaller house or a bigger house? Make yourself poor so that you can have great riches. See, riches aren't real true, real true riches. Okay, not the inflated junk of the world. Real true riches are, can you grow your own food? Can you feed your family when times get bad? Can you live without electricity? Can you work on the vehicle that you own? Or are you helpless? Are you able to live without your cell phone? Can you hunt? Can you fish? Can you hike? You know, is your idea of a hike walking from the couch to the refrigerator? Okay, if it is, you really got to get your life in line. Uh, or got to get some things changed, okay? Um, get yourself in shape. Make yourself poor so that you can have great riches. And you say, what about supporting a ministry? Because that's important. That's there as a Christian. You are supposed to support biblical ministries. Very simple. Look at the ones out there that you could support, get a list of them, and then see how are they living. Are they drowning in debt? Or are they saying, I'm going to follow the scriptures. I don't want to be a borrower that's a servant to some lender someplace. I don't need a multi-million dollar building. I don't need some big stinking church building out there that I can barely make the payments on or whatever else. We don't need to look like the world to win the world. You see? 
this is something that's very, very big, brethren. Um, I'm just going to tell you that. A lot of people just aren't waking up. I'm seeing it in, this, in the Bible-believing circles. It's distressing. And it's just a lot of people are just wanting to get big houses that they can't afford. And I see people in, drowning in debt and whatever else and, and things. And it's this, it's this loopholing, you know, well, is it really a sin to be in debt? And well, if you have a mortgage, I mean, we can't really, you know, yeah, yeah, and it's all these little, yeah, what about the, what this? What do you, yeah. Man, <laughs> look at the writing on the wall. This, can, this country is going to fall. It's going to fall hard. And if you don't make yourself poor soon, you're going to be going down with the ship. Let me tell you. And you're going to be seeing some really, really rough times. And um, I just want the, the, the body of Christ to pray about something. And that is, um, I feel, and I'm praying about this right now, but um, for many, many years I've been teaching the Word of God, and I'm going to continue to teach the Word of God. But I feel there might be a need for a little bit of a shift over to the secular, a little bit secular world of teaching about off-grid living and building things off-grid and whatever else. Because that's a side of me people only get a little glimpse of now and then. They just think, oh, you know, I get my enemies, oh, Dillinger's just about taking people's money and whatever for his ministry stuff. No, there's a lot of other things I do, okay, off, away from the ministry. And some of that stuff I might be bringing out as a way to help people. Um, you can learn all about the scriptures. You can know this book forward and backward and know all the right doctrines and everything else. But if you're not putting practical things from the Bible into your daily life, you're going to suffer for it. The Bible isn't just all spiritual instruction. The Bible has a lot of practical wisdom in it that you need to be following. And um, so I'm praying about it right now. Uh, you know, going back to some secular work and things like that, a little bit more of that stuff. Something I've been struggling with for a long time. Because um, I try to donate, as, or donate, I try to dedicate as much time as I can to the ministry. But I'm seeing a lot of brethren are just not waking up to what's going to happen in this country. And um, I'm not really doing you a service as a preacher, as a Bible preacher and teacher, if I'm just keeping my mouth shut about you people being in debt and getting a bigger house and getting a newer car and all this other stuff. Um, I think it'd be better in some ways. I mean, there's enough information out there I've put out over the years. I mean, you can be instructed in the ways of the Lord very well from watching my channel. Um, but I really think that there, it's just something I'm praying about right now, about, you know, some secular uh, videos and whatever else that can show the truth about, you know, uh, building off grid and whatever else. So just be in prayer about that. I'd like to hear from you down there. And uh, just, I want to say this, I want to put out another thing here, just another challenge, because I know I have some really informed viewers. I praise the Lord for you. Lost or saved? Okay, there's a lot of very smart people out there who understand the economic stuff. I'm, I'm not an expert by any means on the economy. But I'd like to just, I'd like to know what, because I, I, I've, I've racked my brain on this thing of the, the whole thing of a debt-based culture. I know that there have been cultures in the past that have done hyperinflation. They've inflated their currency. They fall, empires fall. I get that. But what about a nation that has created its wealth on debt is there any are there any historical examples of that if any of you out there know of something please let me know because what i'm trying to figure out is okay the debt bubble bursts all right they're doing the, they, they've again brought out the thing of subprime mortgages subprime auto loans people that can't really afford it here's your loan <laughs> here's your mortgage that just that happened back in 2008 okay and you get all this inverted yield curves and all there's all that stuff that you can study I'm not going to get into all that but here's the point. What happens when nobody in America can make their payments? Or I shouldn't say nobody, but almost nobody can make their payments on their houses or their cars anymore. Okay, you say, well, the bank forecloses. Okay, the bank forecloses. But what do they do with them all? You know, they, they'll own all the, all the real estate and everything else out there. They're going to have to sell them cheap or whatever else. But who's going to be able to afford any of that stuff? That's the one thing I'm not hearing many of the economists talk about. There's going to be the greatest depression and stuff, people say. And, okay, people lose their homes. What, what happens? If everybody's, you know, defaulting on their loans, what happens? Uh, I'd like to hear some people's thoughts on that. Um, so, just to 
really want to give some food for thought in the future, some, some ways, because I know a lot of people just haven't studied the thing of off-grid living or, or tiny home movement or, or whatever else, or you know, getting into older vehicles and whatever that you can actually pay for and work on yourself um, or other modes of transportation or whatever else. And I just, I really feel the Lord could be saying, okay, start directing some of your energy towards that. Can, I'm going to continue preaching and teaching the Bible, but I'm thinking, should I do a little bit more of the secular work as well to help people make themselves poor so that they can be rich? So I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. Thank you for watching. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17-18. through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.